Hey guys, um, thanks in advance for watching this video. I want to tell you some things that are going on and give you an idea of some things that you should expect to do um, this week. So uh, the first thing I'll say is that starting today, um, BUSD is allowing us to use Zoom again instead of Google Meets and I like Zoom way better. I think it's just clearer and it like works better. Um, so starting today, the links for ops hours will be um, Zoom instead of Google Meets. Uh, I want to invite more people to come to ops hours. I'm only averaging maybe like five or so students every day. And um, that's why I took away Thursday ops hours because it seemed like that was a day that like sometimes even nobody was coming. And I just thought there was better uses of my time like answering to your guys' emails because you guys are sending me a lot of emails. Um, you know, even if you kind of feel like you're, you understand you're getting what's going on um, with the math right now, um, office hours can still be really good because sometimes you feel like you understand it and you think you like you got the answers really well and then you talk to your math teacher and you're like oh uh, I kind of had it but now I get it even more that it got explained or um, you know sometimes it, it might just be easier on you to do your math with me like helping you along that's what a lot of students do um, shout out to Zariah, uh, Oliver, uh, Shanath, uh, Jessica, um, I'm probably forgetting some people, but th those of you guys that come to ops hours all the time um, and work quietly or ask me questions, um, I, I appreciate it. But you don't have to, right? It's optional. So, um, and so uh, another thing I want to talk to you guys about is um, something that I think I'm kind of seeing with the um, with the Google Form uh, problem sets. So on Thursday, the other day, um, you guys were supposed to do the module for lesson six, part two problem set. And I forgot to click um, the option that allows you to go back and modify or resubmit your answers after you submit once. And very early in the morning, like eight, nine o'clock, I had a ton of emails from you guys um, about that option being missing. Students were saying, uh, some students were just saying, hey, I, I wanted to recheck my answers, um, you know, but I couldn't. Some students were saying, like, um, the thing, the Google form accidentally submitted when I didn't actually submit. Um, some of them were saying it was already submitted for me before I even got there. Um, some were saying I accidentally submitted. Um, some were saying like there was like a technical issue that submitted it. And it was it was weird, but the number of emails I got like it was over like twenty, just made me. I don't know. I just like started thinking like what what why why are so many students worried about this modify thing? Like I didn't think so many students used that. Um, so I went and looked at some of the responses that some of the students that were. Uh, emailing me and some other students that like had already finished it early in the morning there was like maybe about 30 something of you at that time and I noticed that some students had put had left a lot of questions either blank or had put like some sort of like nonsensical answers like random numbers or words or something and I'm like why are students doing doing this and and so I have a sort of a suspicion and I know it's not all of you guys and I know not every student that emailed me or every student that did the thing that morning does what I'm about to say, but I think that some of you might be either leaving the questions blank or kind of putting some random answers in there and then clicking submit because you know when you submit, it's going to show you what the correct answers were and then you could just go back and refix your answers. And if you're doing that, I'm, I'm going to encourage you to, to change your, your structure or your, your approach toward um, what we're doing because I mean, I, I don't think I have to tell you that you're not going to learn as much if you're if you're doing the questions that way than you would if you gave them your full effort and then saw the answers and changed them based on what you saw there. Um, so, like I said, I know not everybody's doing that, but I'm just worried that maybe a lot of students might be. And um, you know, there's already going to be a big gap between how much you learn, um, like doing this distance learning stuff, being away from me, not being in the classroom, not being around your peers to work together with. Um, then you know you would then how much you would learn if we were in the classroom and if you're doing things like cutting corners like just kind of figure out a way to get the answers real easy to the google forms that's going to make it so that you're even you're learning even less than you would have like you're you're making that gap between what you would have learned and what you are learning like even bigger right um so that concerns me a little bit um honestly that i, I I'm not going to change the options because I like students having the, the ability to go back and see how they did and then go back and fix their answers. So there's not really anything I can do to stop you if you are one of the students that are doing it. Uh, I'm just going to ask you to try to have uh, a little more integrity. Um, you know, integrity just kind of means like doing the right thing, even if you kind of know you can get caught um, or you, you probably won't get caught even if you don't do the right thing. Um, 
you know, so uh, the other thing I'm, I'm kind of, I guess, frustrated a little bit about that I want to talk to you about is um, the YouTube videos I'm posting. So uh, I'm going to share my screen with you for a moment. Let's see here. Um, let's go with this one, I think. Yeah. All right. So um, I've got my YouTube channel open. And here, here's all the videos I've been posting uh, pretty much since distance learning started. And keep in mind, I have about 140 something students. I, I think the exact number is 143. And so I know that not every single student is going to get around to watching every single video. Sometimes you guys are cramped for time and sometimes you just forget. Sometimes the videos can be boring, I know. But if I have 140 some odd students, I think I should be getting more than half, right? Like 80, 90 students watching my videos. Look at these numbers of views. This one here has got 19. This one here has 12. And on all these videos, I think like two of the views are mine because I always click on them to make sure the sound is good and that they're working right. And, and then I clicked on a lot of them again today because I wanted to look at the views because I was surprised. So if this says 12 views, that probably really means 10 students watched it out of 140 something. Uh, same thing here. Here's another 12 view one. Um, that, that's really disappointing to me, you guys. Um, you know, I, I think what might be happening is that I assign like a video and then uh, an activity during like each day, right? Like some IXL or Desmos or whatever. And you know that the IXL or the Desmos, um, let me go ahead and get out of this. You know that the IXL or the Desmos or the Google form or whatever is the thing that's going to get you the points in the grade book. So you're not really being held accountable for watching the video. So you're like, whatever, I don't, I don't need to do it. Um, that's another thing that I think is going to widen that gap between what you would learn if you were in class versus like how much you're going to learn at home doing this distance learning thing. Um, you know, I, I, I know it's tempting uh, for us, especially for a lot of you students to say, I already got it. I get this whole thing. I understand it. I don't need to watch Mr. Thomas do a few more examples, but you know, um, so, some of the more recent videos I've posted have different methodologies of solving the questions. I'm using new terminology. Some of the questions are like on a trickier level. Um, you know, I feel like if we were in the classroom, you guys would be able to handle more difficult questions than you probably are able to now because we'd be progressing more. And so if you're not watching the videos, I just, I think you're just, you're making things even a little bit tougher than, than they should be. And so, um, I'm going to, I want to do a few things based this week based on what everything I just talked about. The first thing is that your assignment for the rest of today, after you watch this video, that's, I don't know, probably going to wind up being about 10 or 12 minutes long, is to watch 40 minutes worth of my videos from um, April. Like, don't go back to like way old videos or whatever, ones that I've posted since distance learning started um, that you haven't already watched or whatever. If you've already watched them all, then great. Um, I, I guess you don't have to do it. But I know that's not going to be true for most of you guys based on those number of views I just saw. There's probably not any singular student out there that can say they've watched every single video. If I had to guess, I could be wrong. Um, so you have to watch 40 minutes of my videos. I don't care which videos. Um, if you're struggling and you need to, the basics, go back and watch the videos from the beginning, like lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. If you're, if you're getting pretty good at this stuff and you think you got it down, that's great. I want you to watch some videos from lesson five, lesson six, because I do some tricky stuff with number lines and the questions get harder. And there's, there's practice about how to do this stuff in your head. And if you're getting good at doing this on paper, then let's get good at doing it in your head. Um, you don't have to watch 40 minutes just today though. Uh, I want you to watch 40 minutes between today and tomorrow total. So I'm not saying 40 minutes today and 40 minutes tomorrow. I mean that combined today and tomorrow, I want you to watch a total of 40 minutes of my videos that you haven't um, watched yet. Uh, I won't post another video tomorrow. Like there won't be something like this or anything else. So you can just focus on that. And there's not any other activity for today or tomorrow either. I, I just want you guys to watch some of these videos. Uh, I, don't, I don't feel like posting any new ones because the ones I'm posting aren't getting watched. Um, I don't have any way of controlling or keeping track of whether or not you're watching them. Um, so it's another integrity thing, right? Like, you, you know you're supposed to be watching them. You know I'm asking you to watch them. You know the right thing to do would be to go and watch them. Um, and so, you know, uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to do the right thing. I'm hoping to see my YouTube video views skyrocket over the next couple of days because I'm asking you guys to do this. Um, all right, so then the next thing is 
because I'm super concerned that because you guys aren't watching the videos and I think that some of you guys might be kind of gaming the system when it comes to the Google Forms, that you guys aren't getting um, as much out of the learning that I think you should be. I want to give you an opportunity to prove me wrong. So on Tuesday during Ops Hours, let's play a Percents Kahoot game, the same Percents Kahoot game that we would have played if we were actually in the classroom. I use it with my students every year. Um, we'll come to Ops Hours on Tuesday, 10 to 11. We'll play that Kahoot game live, and let's see how you guys do just in general. Let's see if you guys are getting most of them right or if you guys are getting most of them wrong or what. That way I can see, that, you know, for my own information and for, you, for your information, let's, where, where are we at, you know? Um, so every, everybody come, 10, 10 a.m. Or you don't absolutely have to, it's optional, but I'm inviting everybody, come play a Skahoot with me Tuesday, tomorrow, 10, 10 o'clock. The last thing I wanna do is I think maybe um, some of you guys are more motivated to put in more effort or, or um, like, I don't know, work, work harder if you know you have some sort of like quiz or test coming up. Now we're not doing SPP grades, so I'm not gonna give you like a quiz that would be for like an SPP grade, but I wanna give you like something that's sort of like a quiz. So at the end of the week on Friday, there won't be any other activities, no, no videos or anything for Friday. You're just gonna get a quiz. By a quiz, I mean it'll be a Google form that looks just like the, the homework, but it'll be um, like, just like the problem sets, I mean, but it'll be a little bit longer. It'll have 12 questions and um, you won't be able to see the correct answers when you submit it and you won't be able to resubmit it either. Let me repeat that. You won't be able to modify your answers. You won't be able to resubmit it and you won't see the correct answers at the end. And so I want you to treat it like a quiz where you really try to get all the correct answers right. And, and once you've submitted it, it's like putting it in the box in the classroom where the finished quizzes go, you can't take it back anymore. Um, since there's 12 questions, it'll be out of 12 points. And however many you get right, that's how many I'm gonna put in the grade book. Not the SVP grade book, um, but the how grade book. The same place I'm putting, um, you know, all the rest of your assignments right now, the problem sets and the Desmos and the IXL that you're doing. Um, so that's three, that's three times as much as a normal assignment. Um, you'll have a week to do it just like you have everything else. If you, if you wanna help each other out or whatever, that's fine. You can use a calculator or whatever. But I want you to think of it as like a quiz or a test that's really checking to see whether or not you're learning the stuff that I've been talking about in the videos and, and you're supposed to be learning through all the other activities I'm giving you. Okay, um, all right, so I hope to see you Tuesday, uh, tomorrow during Ops Hours, play as Kahoot. Um, you know, maybe do a little review or get ready for this quiz that you're gonna have to take at the end of the week and um, watch those videos, please, please, please. All right, see ya.